Shabbat Shalom everyone. So lovely to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us and I would especially like to welcome anybody who has not been watching our weekly Erev Shabbat Dvar Torah. It's a pleasure to welcome you and I'd like to welcome you and ask you to join us for the many different classes and uh, different broadcasts that we share from Young Israel of North Beverly Hills and also on my website www.rabbidunner.com R-A-B-B-I-D-U-N-N-E-R.com and if you want to email me I would welcome that I would welcome the opportunity to communicate with you please send me an email pinidunner P-I-N-I-D-U-N-N-E-R at gmail.com looking forward to hearing from you anyway there's nothing worse in the Torah than a curse and in this week's parasha, Kitavo, we have a whole list of curses associated with specific violations. Arur this and Arur that. Arur means curse in Hebrew. Now, I don't want to pretend to you that I understand exactly what a curse means. And I once gave a shear on exactly this topic in relation to Bilam cursing the Jewish nation with many different opinions regarding the effectiveness of a curse. But for sure, it's a really bad thing. If any act of ours is associated with God's curse, that's a bad thing, period. But back to this week's parsha. The Torah tells us that the nation was to be divided into two parts. Six tribes to stand on Mount Gerizim, and the rest, the other six tribes, on Mount Eval. And the Levites would begin to specify the sins that the Torah prefaced with the word Arur. And then the nation would respond Amen. Acknowledging and affirming the Arur. Just to give you a couple of examples of the terrible sins worthy of an Arur. Someone who moves his neighbor's boundary. Someone who misleads a blind man, sending him in a wrong and dangerous direction. The curses also include all the sins associated with sexual immorality and also someone who strikes a person unexpectedly. In fact, if I were to look for a common theme among all the Arurs in Parshat Kitavo, I would say that almost every one is directed toward a sin that involves sneaky, surreptitious behavior. The Torah seems to be cursing underhanded people. Now, You'll note I said the word almost, because there's one arur that does not fit in with this common theme. I'm going to read it to you. Arur asher lo yakim et divrei ha-Torah hazot la-asot otam. Cursed is the one who does not uphold the words of the Torah to do them. Now Rashi explains that this is a general warning to uphold all the laws in the Torah so that you'll avoid all the curses. But the Ramban is not happy with this very broad explanation. He says that this Arur is actually directed at someone very specific, a person who ridicules the validity of the Torah's laws. But then he adds something absolutely extraordinary and I want to read it to you in the original Hebrew, and I'm going to translate it. Veli nir e, he says. And it appears to me that this Arur is talking about al hachazan she'enom sefer Torah al hatzibur. It's talking about the um, community leader, the Chazan, the cantor. But the, the Chazan in halachic literature is not just talking about the cantor. It's talking about who, anybody who is leading the community in prayer who doesn't lift up the Sefer Torah ala tzibur for the congregation, leharot penei ketivato lakol, to show the writing, the actual writing of the Sefer Torah to everybody. Do you know why? Shemitzvah lechol anashim v'hanashim. It is a commandment, a mitzvah, for all the men and women, lirot hakatuv, to see that which is written in the Torah scroll, v'lichroa, and to bow, and to say, to say, we know it, right? It's in the Siddur. This is the Torah which Moshe established for us. And that is 
the custom. What? Are you kidding me? A person is cursed if he's no good at hagba. I mean, let's get this into proportion. Arur adulterers. Arur people who mislead the blind. Arur sneaky thieves. And Arur people who are not great at lifting a heavy sefer Torah. I mean, come on, really? But I think I know the answer. Imagine you prepare a fabulous meal. You do all the cooking and the smells are wafting through the house. You lay the table with the best china, the best silverware you have, crystal, linen. Your family can't wait to eat the food and enjoy the ambiance of the meal. Time comes to eat the meal. Everyone is sitting at the table waiting expectantly and you say, uh, um, sorry, there's no food, there's no meal. That's what the Ramban, mean, Ramban means. Someone lifts up the Torah but does not unfurl the columns. He deprives the congregation of seeing the true essence of the Torah. He parades with the Torah scroll with beautiful silver handles and beautiful parchment. It looks majestic. It looks very Jewish. And everyone is waiting expectantly for the real thing to be shown so that they can see it and they can appreciate it. But if those columns are not unfurled for all of us to read, what does that mean? It means that we haven't taken it to heart. It means that the person who is trying to show this hagba is not really doing it properly. The guy who does hagba has cheated the congregation out of their spiritual meal, just like someone who makes fun of the Torah and worse. The one who does hagba, he's like he's misleading the blind. He's drawing a false border. He's being dishonest. Of course, he's trying to look honest, but he's not. And for that reason, he is included in the category of Arur. On the other hand, a person who proudly unfurls the Torah, who is a living example of the Torah in everything that they do, is worthy of the greatest blessings the Torah has to offer. There is no greater blessing than being an ambassador of Torah, of Judaism, of Jewish heritage, of mitzvot. Lifting a Torah unopened in front of a waiting audience is nothing more than disappointing an exciting crowd, an exciting, excited family, an excited group of people who were waiting for a good meal. What God wants is for us to prepare the meal and to serve it as well. In any event, hopefully I've given you some food for thought and I wish you all a wonderful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much.